Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this um, press conference on Africa's New Deal on Energy. Delighted to be here. There are very few things more important for a fourth industrial revolution than a ready supply of energy. There are very few uh, greater priorities in Africa than getting energy supply, access to energy, and investing in the energy infrastructure. Absolutely critical, critical for the region's future. That said, I'm delighted to have some of the foremost leaders of that region here today to talk to us about Africa's New Deal on energy. We have a very short period of time, unfortunately, due to very, very hectic schedules for all of our panelists here, and indeed, indeed yourselves, I'm sure. So I'll do a very brief instruction of my panel before allowing them to offer us some, you know, some short remarks, and then we'll go to questions. First of all, I have uh, Akim Wumi Ayadeji Adesina, President, African Development Bank, based in Abidjan. Kofi Annan, we all know, Chairman of the Kofi Annan Federation, currently based in Switzerland, Secretary General of the United Nations, 1997 to 2006. Honored to be joined by Daniel Cavalan Duncan, Prime Minister of the Cote d'Ivoire, and Gail Smith, the Administrator of USAID, of course, very involved here through the Power Africa Initiative by President Obama. This is about a transformation, transformative partnership, Mr. Adesina. Please tell us more. It is. Thank you very much. I think, um, let me first welcome the press to this particular event, and I'm glad that all the leaders can join us. Yesterday evening, uh, we launched what was called the Transformative Partnership on Energy for Africa. The question is, why did we do that? We did that because Africa faces tremendous amount of energy challenges. Uh, what we take for granted in developed countries is actually a luxury in Africa, because today Africa essentially has literally no power. You've got 645 million Africans that don't have access to electricity, and over 700 million Africans that don't have access to clean cooking energy. And so, even though Africa accounts for 15% or 16% of the global population, it accounts for 53% of the population in the world without access to electricity. And we lose so much of our GDP because we don't have access to electricity. So the point is very clear. Africa is simply tired of being in the dark. And that's why we are taking decisive actions. Uh, the former UN Secretary General, Mr. Kofi Annan, is here. He did a fantastic job with the Africa Progress Panel report, which actually called for action on this particular issue. So both the New Deal on Energy for Africa and the Transformative Partnership on Energy for Africa that we are talking about is actually a direct response to that excellent work that Mr. Annan had led. And of course, the US President, President Obama, and Gail Smith is here, had been actually working a lot uh, in Africa in moving things forward. So what does the New Deal actually mean for us in Africa? The New Deal in Africa, uh, Energy for Africa, is really to allow us to be able to uh, have on-grid connection, a total of 160 gigawatts of new electricity connections in Africa. That will be the equivalent of building 800 new power plants, uh, each with about 200 megawatts capacity. Transmission and on-grid uh, connections are going to be important, and we are looking at 130 million new grid connections and off-grid connections of about 75 million off-grid connections. The ambition is very high, and it is absolutely doable. Others have done it. China has done it. Vietnam has done it. Bangladesh has done it. There's no reason why Africa can't do it. So the principles that will guide our transformative partnership are as follows. First, we agree all the energy partners in Africa will raise the level of investment in the energy sector. Second, the countries themselves that are the critical ones will increase the share of their GDP going into the energy sector uh, from 0.3% to about 3.4%, and that will make about $50 billion available every year to actually tackle this issue. And uh, fourth is what we launched yesterday, and they were all here, uh, the Transformative Partnership on Energy for Africa as a way of doing public-private partnerships to do innovative financing at scale. And finally, is the importance of reforms of the energy sector that we are all committed to and importance of political will. Let me just close by saying that as partners, we are responding to the needs of Africa and this is going to be a transformative partnership that will allow us to do things faster, to do them at scale and to do them together to light up and power Africa. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Anand, as, uh, as Mr. Adesina said, you've been closely involved in, in pushing the energy agenda in Africa. Yeah, l let me say, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm very happy to be able to join you here this afternoon. When President Adesanya took over the bank, he also asked me to join him as a champion for this new energy deal. Without hesitation, I accepted to play the role of a champion. But alone, I can do nothing. 
and alone President Adesina can do nothing. What we need is your determined and sustained support to make this a reality. We all have to be champions for this bold and noble cause. I think if we are able to power Africa and expand the development base, it will have impact on health, education, manufacturing, and a whole range of other issues where Africa is left behind. In looking at the energy issue, it is also important for us to look across borders and work with neighbors to generate electricity, not just limited to our own individual uh, countries. Efficiency also counts. We have to use the energy, limited energy we have efficiently and redirect resources that today goes into subsidies which are not always effective towards creating access to the poor who do not uh, have energy. I think uh, this is a, 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 an exciting moment and I applaud the leadership of the President of African Development Bank, the energy and the courage that is brought to this. And I'm confident that if we all work together, we pool our efforts and resources, we will succeed. So by powering Africa, we are also contributing to climate change because we are pushing for renewable energy. Obviously, we have a judicious mix of energy so that we have to use, but eventually the idea is to go green. And I think Africa has the possibility of being the first continent because of the situation we are in to become a green continent by really, really pushing for renewable energy. Thank you. Thank you. Mindful of time, because I know Gail has to leave quite shortly, unfortunately. Prime Minister, could you tell us a little bit about how committed you are to in, in, enforcing this uh, partnership? Well, uh, thank you. I would like first like, uh, I would like uh, to congratulate uh, President Adesina for his initiative. And uh, well, as far as we are concerned, we attend the meeting organized by the ADB Bank uh, last September in Abidjan. Well, the situation in Cote d'Ivoire is that uh, our capacity production is now 2,000 megawatts. And by 2020, we want to reach 4,000 megawatts. <laughs> well, to do that, uh, we have improved the regulatory framework uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, giving uh, uh, creating a business environment for invest investment by the private sector. Uh, well, in Cote d'Ivoire, 62% of the investment made in the country is made by the private sector. We have an increase in GDP of about uh, 9% as an average about during these uh, well, uh, four past years. And when we have this growth, we need to have at least the double of consumption in electricity. So, well, uh, for the production, as I mentioned, we have to double the production from now to 2020. The financing should come mainly by the private sector, will be done by the private sector. And we want to change also the mix of energy in Côte d'Ivoire. For the time being, 65% of energy is done by uh, Tomo Power Plant and 35% by hydroelectric dams. What we want to do is by 2020, uh, well, 60% will be done by hydropower and uh, only 30% by, well, thermal power plant. And 10% will be renewable energy using sun, of course, biomass, because uh, each year we, there's about 12 million tons of waste of agricultural products. So we have to use it to produce electricity. And what to, to end, I would like to say that uh, the interconnection of the grid in the subregion is really important. We now furnish electricity to five countries already. And we, are, we have been asked to furnish, to supply electricity to three of the countries. So that's the reason why we have to double the capacity to meet uh, our commitments. Thank you. <coughs> Gail, how does the, this partnership fit into your vision for Africa's energy in the future? I think the beauty of it is that it's really a, a common single vision and it's important to note that Power Africa, which was launched two and a half years by President Obama for many of the same reasons that 
that you've just heard described. It's possible to do it. The deficit in energy is a deficit across the development spectrum. Uh, and we've got willing and very able partners. The African Development Bank was a partner uh, from the very launch of Power Africa. Now, I think what we've seen in Power Africa exceeded our expectations. We have been able to mobilize over $30 billion in private sector commitments. These are private sector investors that want to invest in Africa's energy sector. And $10 billion in public funds, so other countries, Sweden, for example, the EU, uh, our partners in the AFDB and the World Bank. So it's clear that there's the interest, and I think what we've seen and what the African Development Bank will be able to do here is build on the fact that there's a political commitment, that there ob are obstacles, but there is a willingness to surmount those obstacles, whether it's the reforms or an increased commitment uh, in the budget, and there are willing investors. So we are thrilled that the AFDB is launching this initiative. Uh, we intend to work very, very closely together. And I think what the evidence shows in terms of of Power Africa and now this initiative and some others that are out there. This is an idea whose time has come and I think the interest and will are conjoined here to see the results that uh, we all envision. So we're thrilled and congratulations. Thank you. Now, and we're mindful you have to leave shortly, so. Yes, uh, please do not take this as an indication of anything other than I have a crazy schedule with my apologies. We, we, we thank you for joining us. I wish to assure you we have uh, you know, three great leaders here to take questions. So we haven't, do not have a huge amount of time. Can we have a show of hands, please, to see who, who would like to ask anything? Okay, we have one over there. Anybody else? Okay, so two here. Okay, we'll go for Francis first. Can I, can I have a microphone over here, please? Microphone's gone missing. Francis, would you mind shouting, please? How's your voice today? Okay. This is Francis heard from SABC in South Africa. Okay. So for the benefit of the audience, because we didn't have a microphone there, three questions here. How many countries have, have signed up to this partnership already? What kind of commitment have you, have you got? The implications for South Africa and also the implications for green energy when obviously on the practical level there are still challenges with that technology. Um, gentlemen here in the front row, we'll take your question too, please. Again, would you mind shouting? We seem to have a microphone problem. And then maybe we'll, we'll, we'll take all these questions at the same time. as a climate negative, so to speak, coal, coal power stations, uh, or, or, or dam for that matter, in terms of the environmental damage that they may cause. And at the same time, we know that there's a, that there's a funding issue. Obviously, there's a financing for development and commitments, but uh, African countries are constrained in terms of uh, funding, so they need to go for certain, uh, certain, types, of, uh, certain types of energy which are less costly than, uh, than the renewables. So this is a question on, on the mix and whether there's any pressure to, uh, to re rely on traditional sources more than renewable sources. In the short term. In the is. short term. Mr. President. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I think first and foremost in terms of the number of countries, you know, all African countries are agreed uh, around the Africa power vision, you know, that Africa basically is tired of being in the dark. Uh, I think as Mr. Adan was saying, you know, without power, you have no uh, economic growth. It's like blood in your body. If you don't have it, you don't have life. Lack of that electricity costs Africa today over 4% of the GDP is cut off just because of that. So all African countries agree that this is the topmost issue that we must do. And in trying to fix that, 
It will allow us to industrialize. It will allow the small and medium-sized enterprises to grow. It will allow kids to go to school and be able to read and therefore be part of the uh, fourth industrial revolution that everybody's talking about. And at the end of the day, it will also make Africa quite competitive uh, in, in, in global market for many of the things. So this is something that we all agree, as African leaders agree. <clears throat> now, yesterday when we launched the Transformative Partnership on Energy, uh, we had several African presidents there, despite how cold it is here. Uh, Mr. Anand was there, uh, the president uh, of, um, the prime minister was there, the president of Guinea was there, uh, the president of, uh, of um, Rwanda was there, and so was um, Prime Minister, uh, Prime of, Minister Ethiopia. of Ethiopia was there. Um, so all the African leaders that were actually here were there, and that just tells you the level of political will and commitment to this transformative partnership on energy. We want things to be done faster at scale and together. That's the message. Now, when it comes to the issue of the, uh, South Africa, uh, we also think that, and Mr. Anana mentioned this also, that it's important to look at regional energy systems. You know, so we have Grand Inga that is there. We got South Africa ESCOM that's very important for the countries that are all across the SADAC region. So we need to also fund and we will support regional uh, uh, energy efforts that will serve many uh, countries. And on the mix of energy, Africa cannot develop with what it doesn't have. It can only develop with what it has. The energy endowments in Southern Africa region is different, right? So you've got a lot of you got coal in that, in, that, in that Southern Africa region. You also have a lot more that South Africa is doing in terms of solar, which is renewable energy coming in more and more. You go to cent Central Africa region, a lot of it is all around hydro. So most of the big hydros are there. You go to West Africa, it's all around gas and also the hydro. And so we are going to actually have a transformative partnership on energy that is technology neutral. But I think Mr. Anand said it right, is that Africa will also go green. So we are going to accelerate a lot of investments in renewable energy, which is very significant. And on the issue of UMAS thing, just one point I want to say uh, is on the uh, financing issue. Um, you know, the African Development Bank over the last 10 years has put in about $34 billion into infrastructure, you know, um, and energy being a significant component, uh, and also roads and so on. What we want in the next five years, we are planning to put in uh, $12 billion into, uh, into energy sector and that we will also use it to help de-risk the financial markets so that we can leverage about 40 to $50 billion uh, into this particular sector. Thank you. No, just, just to add on, I think when the Prime Minister of Ivory Coast spoke, he indicated efforts to uh, move towards renewables, relying on the judicious mix they have now, using geothermal and hydro, and increasing the renewable portion of the energy generation as we go ahead. And that really is going to be the strategy of most of the African countries. And I think uh, the President Adesanya is right when he said, you have to rely on what you have to move forward and then improve as we, you go forward. This would also require that governments come up with the right policies, right policies that create the regulatory environment that attracts foreign investments. We need investments, we need private sector investments to play a role. It's not an area where the governments are going to do it alone or where one is going to rely on the, uh, uh, international economic assistance uh, to do this. And so it's, it's, a, it's a new ball game. And I think the governments realize that policy has to be part of the revolution or transformation that we are talking about. Thank you. I make it. We have two minutes left, so shame to not you know, not to you know, lose these leaders' time. Do, any, do we have any more questions? We've got time for one more. Okay. In the absence of one, if I may, um, I'll, I'll play my wild card and ask you a question of my own. You mentioned public-private partnerships. Well, can you give us some insights into the uh, the, uh, the the support from the private sector, Mr. President? Um, the <coughs> present, as part of the uh, transformative partnership on energy for mm -hmm. Africa, is the Africa Lead uh, Energy Leaders Group, which is the group of uh, African leaders, mostly private sector people, that are involved. And I think, as Mr. Anand said, t just take a look at how much this is going to take, right? Um, we have to commit roughly about almost 40 to $70 billion into the sector to solve this particular problem. But the money is actually there. And so if you take a look in Africa today of total pension funds that we have, it's $1 trillion. Sovereign wealth funds, about $343 billion. 
all this money is in private hands. So it's actually the role of the bank for us and working with others, World Bank and everybody else, is to de-risk the investments into the energy uh, sector a lot more to make sure that um, when people are investing, uh, things like partial risk guarantees will be provided, uh, credit enhancement facilities will be provided, and that we are also going to help to um, deal with some of the political uh, risk. We also make sure that people don't want to do some of these things in terms of how they, they are money. So private sector is going to be, play a very big role so the transformative partnership on energy for Africa is really, Mr. Knight said it right, it's actually getting the public and the private sector. The public sector set the, you know, the enabling environment, the regulations, the pricing of energy, and making sure that that is actually right, and the private sector making sure that we can actually de-risk that and leverage that into it. So it's, a, it's actually quite transformational, and we are very delighted that this is the direction that Africa needs to go. We all have to go together. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Mr. Maybe Prime Minister, please. What uh, I would like to say, to, be, to give an example of the participation uh, by the private sector to finance the energy sector, I will take the case of Cote d'Ivoire. We have two main uh, uh, thermal power plants, uh, Azito and uh, Ciprel. Uh, the financing is about uh, 500 uh, million US dollars. That has been totally financed by the private sector. If you make to put in place the regulatory framework, if you improve uh, the, the way to do business in the country, uh, well, there's no problem about financing. Uh, Côte d'Ivoire has been ranked among the 10 best reformers in the world, uh, according to the doing business of the World Bank. And uh, in that case, there is no problem of financing. When I mentioned that we have to double the capacity of uh, production in Côte d'Ivoire, going from 2,000 megawatts to 4,000 4, megawatts, that will be totally financed by the private sector. And there is no problem. We have uh, international tender, there's a lot of competitors, mm -hmm. and just, uh, well, you take the best of, of them. That's all. Of course, uh, a fine record in attracting foreign investment. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. This session is now over. Thank you all for joining us as well. And the pre I just want you once you, the press, to remain engaged. <laughs> and yes. and, and be champions too. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Anand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best conclusion. Yeah. Yeah.